Let's name cars that have seven-speed dual-clutch transmissions. Okay. Mine came in GTS. The Porsche True. PDK. Yes. The 2020 Mustang GT500. Excellent point. Yes. The M2 Competition DCT. Yes. And the Kia Seltos. <laughs> the 2021 Kia Seltos mm. that we're in, that we're driving. One of these things is not like the others, right? Yeah, I, I get your point. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. This is the same company who builds the Telluride that we recommend all the time. True, true, true. Brilliant SUV. Mm -hmm. This is the same company that built the Stinger that we also really like and yes. recommend frequently to yes. you on the podcast. Uh -huh. And now they have built a new class of SUV for them. They've never built this size before. It fits True. right between the Soul and the Sportage. Because they have Albert Bierman, who used to be the BMW MVP of engineering, and brought him along. You know how BMW builds niche models? I think that's rubbing off a little bit, because now they've Seriously, found yes. even right. more yep. niche. Yep. They've slotted this in, and to be honest, it looks a little bit, there's some hints of Land Rover in the, the overall proportions I'll, going on here. I'll go you another way. And I will come back to this a few times because the thing <laughs> that struck me while researching for this car yeah. is how much it looks like the Volvo XC40. XC40 is good. Yes. And yes. it's surprisingly interesting to compare those two even though they are not in the same class. But it's That's interesting true. because this That's is true. technically listed as like a subcompact SUV, but it is bigger <laughs> than that name. It is much bigger yeah. than that name. Yeah. And it actually has almost the same dimensions as the Volvo XC40. No but kidding. But this no kidding. is 29,500 loaded out, and the Volvo Lately. loaded out will almost be twice that. It'll be low 50s. This is interesting. I thought, all right. What is this new SUV, CUV thing? What class does this fit in? What, mm -hmm. what's, what's all this then? Yep. And I started driving it, and I kind of like it. As do a matter you? of fact, okay. I do like it. Okay, all right. Because it feels like that influence of Albert Bierman across the board. Now, he mm. is the vice president of high-performance engineering vehicles for Hyundai Motor Group, yes. so he's not really in charge of Kia. But it seems like this feel has kind of infiltrated mm. across the company because there's some spice here. There's something going on here that was, okay. frankly, unexpected. I thought it'd be fine. And the fine trim levels are the lower trim levels with the 2-liter engine and the 146 horsepower. That is key. It just that is key. rolls. But then you get into this that has this smaller engine, 1.6-liter. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it has much power. 175 horsepower, but it's got the turbo. And, yeah, almost 200 pound-feet of torque. That's where the magic starts. Yes. And then down here on the drive mode button, you want to ignore smart and sport yes. and eco and all that stuff. You want to put it in sport. You want to be in sport all the time. All of yes. the time. Mm -hmm. And this thing comes to life. It's almost like they're limiting turbo boost in every other mode. And it, suddenly you're like, whoa, whoa. I moves. took a Ford F-150 on the on-ramp. <laughs> I took it. And it was thinking, all right, what's this little CUV? Yeah. Boo! It's not a rocket ship, but it's like a bottle rocket at it, least. It, there you go. It moves surprisingly moves. quick. And that change from normal to sport also totally changes yeah. the feel of the transmission. It does. Remember, it's a seven-speed dual clutch. Yep. And if you're in sport mode, it will snap off shifts. Now, it does not have paddles. No paddles. But it will snap off shifts. You could leave it to shift for itself, or you can actually yep. use the stick, and you can change the, the, the shifting. However, if you put it in normal mode, it drags its own shifts like it's trying to act like an automatic. Yeah. And it feels yeah. really strange to have a dual clutch mimic an automatic like that, and it makes this thing feel underpowered. And then you're right, you put it into sport mode and you go, oh, this has got enough. Like, well, this this is fine. This yeah. is interesting yeah, yeah. now. There's some personality down in here. And I wasn't expecting that. But again, because we love the Telluride and the Stinger, why should I be surprised? There's a renaissance going on at Kia. And to build a car it's and keep the cost price. down, yes. you can tell. There's a few things mm -hmm. that you don't get, like the sunroof is not available. You don't yeah. get one of yeah, those. Yeah. And there's a specific styling element that will tell you. It's a giveaway. And it's right here at the top of the A-pillar where it meets the roof. It's okay. a point. And you open the door, and it's either an extrusion or a tube, and it's welded to a point. So it's not a stamping. Mm. Mm. And you can tell. There's little things to save money. That's... It doesn't mean it's bad and low sure. quality. It just means That's where it's a lower was. price. Sure. You can see the savings, but you can see it manifested in the styling, which is yep. interesting. Now, speaking of styling, I like it. I I appreciate what is going on because to make 
good design happen, it doesn't just go on expensive products and expensive cars. Agreed. They've got to manage the surfaces. They've got to you know, build a, an inoffensive front end that is still very Kia-like. <laughs> an inoffensive they, front end. And they have, which a lot of manufacturers can't figure that out. All they do is offensive front ends. <laughs> So an inoffensive They're front done end. with inoffensive. They're like, for, nah, forget, screw it. forget attractive from it. Let's just make it inoffensive. Uh -huh. In modern cars, that's a victory. That's terrifying. <laughs> I like the styling. I'm intrigued by it. The color is, you know, it's not quite all there for me, but the that doesn't color matter. Is, the color is dehydrated urine. <laughs> the color is awful. It's, and I'm a guy that likes bright colors. You like bright colors. This is a bad yellow. It's a genuinely <laughs> bad yellow. It actually photographs okay, but I'm, I'm coming right out there and saying it. This is an <laughs> ugly color on an interesting car design. I, I have to say it. Color can make or break things. If you like this color, great, but it does show you the interesting elements around Agreed. the car and Agreed. they've managed the surfaces very well. They've managed, especially the rear end. I like the termination. Mm -hmm. I like the black roof. I like the C-pillar where it has just a chrome element back there. And then the proportions of the taillights mm -hmm. down to the interesting shapes down low. You can see that repeated in the interior. And it's mm -hmm. also, inoffensive but it's also going to look good it looks good it you it's, can tell if you look closely and you play automotive journalists you can tell there's cheap materials yeah, here yeah. you can tell where the money was saved but again this starts at just over 20 grand yes. and loaded with all this tech it is 29 and a half so i see the victory there mm. now, you, know, you know another competitor to this car okay but subaru crosstrek the yeah, crosstrek yeah. is pretty much the only player in this really small compact cuv space that has all-wheel drive but it has a cvt not a dct yeah and yeah. it doesn't do torque vectoring this has all-wheel yes. drive yes, it this does. has torque vectoring all-wheel drive and the, the, the lower engine well it's bigger but it's lower power yes, on this the joy of turbo doesn't have the beautiful dct and i love that kia is doing this it means they're paying attention. Mm -hmm. They actually still want enthusiasts to yes. enjoy their products. Yes. It occurs to me, if you had a Hyundai Veloster N and this new Seltos, you'd have a pretty cool garage that does it all, fun and utility, for under 60. That's a good pairing. Two brand new cars. That's a good pairing that for not much great. money. I see that. For I see under that. 60K? That's compelling. So, the interior, you might say, well, it's not the most interesting ever, but it's going to age well. There's Every feature, every lane departure and yes. safety assist feature you All can possibly of those sensors, imagine. For sure, yep. And that is on the fully loaded SX. So this is the trim that you want, and it's still under 30. This is compelling. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> now, it isn't all wine and roses in this interior, though, I have to say. I didn't know it was wine well, and roses. Well, there, there's a few things going on here. First off, this infotainment thing mm -hmm. is trying so hard, it's made it worse. It is pre-programmed. Okay. It's playing right now with sounds of nature. This is not coming off a phone. It's coming off some sort of hard drive in the car. <laughs> Currently, it's playing a snowy village. I I just, I, I have to yeah, stop, stop it because you've got to be kidding. But you can have, uh. like, the sounds of rain, the sound of the beach. You're, you're driving your car. What are you doing with those sounds? That's really weird to me. That exists. Also, it does have Apple CarPlay, which means bring your cable, plug in yes. Apple CarPlay, easy, yes. great. However, while I love Apple CarPlay, there are many of us that are still Bluetooth connecting our phones. I have had more trouble connecting my phone Bluetooth here no and kidding. getting it to work than just about any car we've driven in the past year. Really? Now, again, no plug kidding. it in, go Apple CarPlay. That's much better, much easier. I'm not debating that reality, but the Bluetooth was difficult, and I kept wanting to go back to sounds of nature. <laughs> just stop. Okay, stop. That's trying it's too like hard. It's like a, a low-cost, luxury sort of extra sort of thing you can do. You know how Mercedes at the high end mm. gives you fragrances in yes. the glove box? Yeah. There's no fragrance here. You get sounds of nature You get instead. sounds of nature. Also, oh, terrible. The, the back seat has got decent space. Yeah. Better than the Subaru Crosstrek, yeah. I would wager, or at least similar. However, I will say this, it has more cargo space than the Crosstrek. You because put the seats down? Because it has the big kind of boxed out back end. Mm -hmm. So now let's mm -hmm. go to the XC40, yeah. which honestly, we're going to show you side by side the yeah. sides of these cars. This and the XC40 look surprisingly similar. And I think that's actually a good thing. They're both very attractive. And they come in colors. But what's interesting <laughs> is... The back seat on this, which is again classified as a subcompact, which is, is bigger than the XC40 back seat. Just the numbers, the, the, the measurement numbers alone. There's more headroom and legroom in this than the back seat of the XC40 at nearly twice the cost. You know when car manufacturers say they have best in class something? They always have best in class something, even if it's best in class bad reliability. A They're going to claim one, something. Yes. 
there's sometimes when they're not wrong. And this is one of them. <laughs> when there is genuine space back there and you get in, you're surprised and you think, well, they've just really paid attention to every little aspect. And you can tell you've had to reduce the price in this car. Yes. So what can you do? But I still like this car. I, I still like what they're doing here. And it's I, I shouldn't be surprised. I honestly. guess I do think that the personality shift up into sport is kind of pronounced. I mean, if I go back here it is. into smart or normal, You're gonna hate yourself. it genuinely becomes boring. Yeah. Honestly, it becomes yep. boring to drive. And the DCT, which is surprisingly fantastic, becomes this transmission where you're like, what are you, what are you doing exactly? You're yeah. not really sure. It is surprising how much just going into sport it's great. makes it like, hey, it's spry. It moves Comes to quick. life. This also yeah. only weighs 3,000 pounds. Which is that impressive. That is really light. Now, back to my XC40 uh, discussion. The fully loaded one's like 3,300, somewhere in there. But we're talking but about still. a five or 600 pound difference from the XC40. Yeah. And you can feel that as well. This is also a little more powerful than the XC40. I'm sorry to be beating on it because I genuinely like the XC40. That's why I started chasing the comparison because the XC40 is something that I genuinely like and we liked it on our TV episode that we did. There's a few things though that uh, the XC40 and those kind of things are better. Another place this is cheap is ride quality. This okay. bounces a lot. This feels Does. oversprung, underdamped, bouncy, whatever term you'd like to use that makes it apply to you. It's just, it's springy. I mean, it's it, like it a feels, country song now, just to there you go. apply Look out. adjectives and slow it down. And, you and then know, talk like, about it happening to you in reverse. Exactly. It's going to be great. Yeah. So that's, that but describes it, the suspension It, it bounces problem. around a surprising amount. I mean, look at us actually moving in the car. Yeah. It doesn't have a like a long distance comfortable ride. That's a place where the price also reveals itself. Yeah, yeah. The, the steering is solid. The one other place that I'm not thrilled with is the brakes. Now it depends on how you like your brake pedal. This is grabby. You brush the brake pedal and it is it is clamping down. I'm doing it. It's clamping down all of a sudden. Now, if you're car. a person, race car, grab No, you. it's not. It's not a race car. If you're a person that really likes an aggressive brake pedal, you're fine. But if you're a person that, depending upon how you commute, what you want the brake pedal to respond to, you're going to be surprised by how grabby it is. I'm not taking away from the fact that this is well thought out, it dynamically is. well set up. Yeah. I just, for this market segment, would expect a better ride and a more easygoing brake pedal. Okay. For how it's going to be used, which is commuting. For how it's going to be used, I suppose, but I do like that it has some spice. Uh, there's some feel, there's some personality and character here, mm -hmm. which I wasn't expecting and isn't to be found in most SUVs in this class. I agree with that. Now, the suspension that Todd was talking about, in the S and the SX trim levels that have the all-wheel drive, you do get independent rear suspension, mm -hmm. whereas on the front-wheel drive models, you only get a torsion beam. Okay. Yeah. Now, this just has a center locking diff and it throws power front and back. That's really all it does. Yeah. But it is more proactive than sensing some slippage and applying torque. It's, it feels a little bit different and that manifests itself just at the stoplight. People aren't ready for me. <laughs> that, they are not ready for me. That can be said about a lot of things. <laughs> we said about a lot of things. When yes. we're into it, sport mode, I'm ready for it and it, it finds its boost. Yes. I am gone. Yeah. This, this thing just shoots. I'm not saying it's a rocket ship. I'm not. It just, it's so surprising. And it's That's out the of there. Thing. And it's yeah. putting through the DCT and the all-wheel drive. It's putting the power down. I, People are going, how did that thing just walk me? It's quicker it's than the surprising. numbers suggest. Yeah. That's the big thing. 175 yeah. horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque in, in this age is a tiny amount of power. But yeah. in this small compact SUV world, that's in the upper probably quarter of all the power being offered across the board. <laughs> yeah. And then at that close to 3,000 pound weight, it does take off. Yeah. Uh, every time yeah. I really put my foot in this, I just go, oh, well, that's that's better than I expected. Yeah. And I put my foot in it thinking, okay, what is this? It's a tiny little 1.6 liter. It doesn't have a whole lot of power. Really, better really give it a lot of gas. And it goes, all right, let's get gone. Yeah. It's Which very surprising. Great. Yeah. Okay, so more character than you expected, more amenities, standard features, and then at this top trim level, you pretty much get everything. Like we were saying about safety features and everything they can throw at this thing. Mm -hmm. It's impressive, and it's seemingly kind of a good deal, to be honest. Well, I mean... Space, the space yeah. is crucial at this particular size. If the ride and interior of this are good enough for you, and I think they're good enough for a lot of people, you've saved yourself a ton of money on an interesting looking car that suggests something higher end. 
That's pretty cool. That is cool. You can't even, at the top level here, you're not even touching the base XC40 yet. Just, yeah. It, Which it, is it interesting. It starts in the 30s. Because yep. you're above yep. 45 at the top Volvo XC40 yes, you are. trim level. Yeah, you are. You think, all right, for the trade-offs, you're not upset. This is not a market segment that I would ever shop in. It's not interesting to sure. me, but let's be honest. This is the market segment that's red hot. It's And so to have yeah. something that has decent styling and actually is surprisingly peppy. That's the word I'm looking. I'm going with peppy. It's surprisingly peppy. <laughs> that's let's where go we landed. With that. I, hey, I just, it's not, it's not a sporty thing. I do think <laughs> its ride is, is too abrupt. Too shaky it's a of little a ride. aggressive. The steering but, is very just. Oh, we're on it. We're on it. But for what you're dealing with here, you know what? There's a lot of car here. 